One of the key ways of working that our team keeps coming back to is what is nature doing? What's the natural way that things happen? If you've ever seen one of those photographs of the giant eider magnetic confinement machines, nature doesn't do it that way. There is no situation out there where that's happening. And I think that's why we have not been able, as a community, to do it that way either, because nature does not want to do anything that way. I don't see, how do I put this? I'm not looking for free energy. I'm not looking for energy out of nothing. What I see when I look in the, at the world is that the universe has an enormous amount of energy that is constantly being transformed from one state to another in all of the most amazing ways that you could imagine. So I'm looking for the transformation of energy. And to look then at a large scale picture of how, does nat how is nature doing this already, we can look at stars and planets in the interstellar medium. This is a good simple representation of a planet from an electrical point of view. Planets have enormous amounts of electric current coming into them and going out of them. It's not simple like a light bulb. Oh, no way. The currents are going in and out of the North Pole, in and out of the South Pole, and there's ring currents going around. This is just two sets of currents. We're up to, I think, like six or seven that we know about now that are around uh, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn. And then we're going to take this planet picture, blueprint, if you will, design, idea, the way that nature is doing things, and we'll put that into the larger world that a planet is part of, namely getting its energy from its star, its central star. Stars also have pole currents, ring currents. I'm drawing in some planets there. Planets all have their magnetic bodies, electricity coming in, going out. This pattern starts to appear, if you draw it correctly, right? You start to see that there's, there's some structure here that nature seems to be repeating. The magnetic body of planets is something I try to help my students understand. We see dots of light when we look at a planet. Jupiter is just a dot of light when seen with our eyes. But if, if we could see the magnetic body of Jupiter or Saturn, it would be larger than your hand if you hold your hand up against the sky. Different planets are made of different materials. There's no understanding really of why planets are made of different materials, but we do know that different planets are made of different materials. And then we're going to look at, well, let's place all of this into the interstellar medium. The interstellar medium we now understand is highly structured, highly structured, and that was not known before 10 years ago. So let's take our star now, we're zooming out more, we see the star, imagine all the planets around it, keep that in your head, and we're going to place this into a larger world that the, su the sun lives in, that the stars live in. We now know through direct data that there are filaments throughout the interstellar medium, and stars are only along those filaments. Stars are not randomly placed, they're placed like leaves on a tree. We also see these other things in there, um, which I'm making as blue dots, and you might see them referred to as protostellar cores or something like that. And whenever I hear the word proto, I know the person has no idea what they're talking about. They just need something to just put in place. Now, it, it, it may be that these other blue, I put them blue dots, are something else entirely. Why do they have to become stars? Maybe the stars are there to help these other things, right? We don't know yet. We don't know how, what all the roles these things play. There's a lot of organic molecules in the interstellar medium. It's one of those stories, you, can read, you just get tired of reading them. Astronomers are surprised. Astronomers are shocked, right? All the organic molecules out there. Hundreds and hundreds of organic molecules. Sugars are out there. Amino acids are out there. What are they doing out there? If we look at just the inorganic elements, this is the top 11. Okay, this is just by abundance. This list changes, right, as we get more sensitive instruments. But here's the top 11. Part of what I do is study the interstellar medium, and, and this list is known to me. And after our set of experiments that you've just heard about, we're sitting there and we're going, wait a minute, wait a minute, I think I've seen this list before. Those are the, the elements that we saw appear in our chamber. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think what we're looking at here is that the interstellar medium, in ways that we don't yet understand, is quite capable of making whatever molecules and elements it needs. It's not, it's not just some random collection, that those stars, the planets, the filaments, they all have functions up there in the galaxy. They're not doing nothing. It's an absurd idea to think that nature would organize such an enormous something that had no function. Makes no sense. So, what are the, so this, the interstellar medium can make whatever it needs or organize whatever it needs. The easiest elements that it makes and organizes are the ones that you're looking at there. And they are also the same elements that we see most prominently appearing in our chamber.